Hello! Are you using the new Bullseye version of the Raspberry Pi operating system and you want to set up your own custom keyboard shortcuts? Well, in this video, we're going to talk about that. In my last video, I talked about what you can do if you are using this new Bullseye operating system and you've noticed that Alt-Tab doesn't work anymore and you want to be able to have Alt-Tab. So that's a different video. You can watch that if you want. In this one, we're just going to focus on how to add custom keyboard shortcuts to this new version of Raspberry Pi um, that uses the Mutter window manager. So starting off, um, I did my search. Right? I did my bit of Googling, well, duck duck going, uh, for customizing keyboard shortcuts used in Mutter. And uh, you know what? the the top few hits are all about Windows, so not very reassuring. Uh, I did try to dig a little deeper, couldn't figure out how to do it in Mutter. So instead of that, what I'm going to show you is how to set up a tool called XBind Keys, which lets you define your own keyboard shortcuts and what they should do. This page here on the Arch Linux wiki has all these details. It also mentions that there is a GUI tool that you can use to do all of your customizations, but it didn't work for me. So I'm going to show you how to do it from the console, from the terminal. It's not that bad. It... Okay, so let's get started. The first thing we need to do is install XBind keys on our system. So you open up a terminal. If you don't already have one open, you just click this icon over here to start up a new one. But I mean, I've already got one, so I'll just close that. And in here, we have to run a command first. sudo apt update, hit enter. You may be prompted for a password. And this is just to refresh the list of packages that we're going to need. Once that's done, then the next command will be to install xbind keys. So to do that, you type sudo apt install xbind keys okay hit enter and then it may prompt you like it is for me so just press enter when it asks you do you want to continue and it'll start downloading and installing the tool for us now while it's doing that let me point out that on this website it has a whole bunch of commands here. It tells you a bunch of stuff. So you can refer to this page for instructions on how to get things up and running. Uh, but I am going to give you uh, my take on how we can do this. All right, so this is done now. Let me type clear just so we can get rid of all of that. So we have the tool installed, but we have to configure it now to tell it the different keys that we want it to watch for and then what commands we want it to activate once it sees those keys being pressed. So we can start by typing x bind keys just like that and press enter because the way this tool works it has to have that configuration file in place before it'll do anything and the good news of just running this command trying to get it to start is it tells you exactly what to do next. See it says that okay we don't have that file yet but we can create one by running this command. So just select this, this whole thing as you see here, with your left mouse button, and then just press your middle mouse button, or hold down on Shift and press the Insert key if you don't have a middle mouse button. So you can get to paste it like that, press Enter, and now we have our configuration file in place. Okay, so from here we have our configuration file. We need to do two things. We need to open up this file so we can start adding in our own custom shortcuts. And also we need to run the tool to tell us how to specify the different key combinations we want. So let's open up that file for editing. So we know that this is the name of the file. We just need to open it in a text editor. So I'm going to start by going into my start menu and going into the programming and picking Genie as a text editor. Uh, you can pick any text editor you want. I'm going to use Genie because it colors things, makes it easier to understand what you're looking at. So I'm going to open that. 
once you have your text editor open, and let me increase the size of the font here, just using the control and mouse wheel to make this larger. Okay, so now I can go to File, Open, and we're going to find this file. So uh, if I pop back over to the console, you can see it's the, the file name starts with a period. That means it's a hidden file. So within your text editor, if you, I'm going to click on Home. And right now I have it set up so that it can see hidden files. If you cannot see files that start with a period, then you can right click anywhere in this white space and uh, set this option, show hidden files, and then you'll be able to see it. Anyway, so let me scroll down to dot X bind keys. Where is it? Oh, there we go, here, dot X bind keys. Double click to open. And here we go. Oh, I need to increase the size of this one. So just control and mouse wheel. Okay, so you can see with this file, um, anything in this file that starts with a pound sign is a comment. So they've actually prepared this file with a bunch of instructions for us on how to get started. In fact, right here, uh, this is the command we're about to run in the terminal. So it can show us the different key combinations we need to put into this file. And right here, this is actually how you would uh, write it out. So if we scroll down, you'll see there's actually just one entry. Everything else is just comments. So this is a sample entry, how it would look. So the thing in the quotation marks, that's the command to run. And then the, th the thing on the next line is the key combination to activate that. All right, so we have our configuration file open. Next is to use the terminal. So let me just move my windows around. I'm gonna put my text editor to one side and my terminal I'll bring over to here. And again, let me just scroll back up quick so we can see again that this is the command that we need to run in the terminal so that we can see what kind of key combinations we can use. X bind keys dash dash multi key. By highlighting it, it's now copied into our clipboard. So we can go into the terminal and just press the middle mouse button to paste, or again, shift insert if you don't have a middle mouse button, and then press enter. So once we've entered that command. You can see it's giving us some instructions. We just need to press those key combinations now. And uh, what we need to do, it also popped up this window with the title X bind key hit a key. This window has to be active when we're pressing our key combinations. Let's just press a few buttons just to see how it goes. For example, I'll just press the letter A. And, and there you can see it down there. Uh, it's saying mod2 plus a. Now mod2 is just a reference to the fact that I have um, the number lock on. In fact, if I had number lock or caps lock or scroll lock, it would show these different mods. Um, but we can ignore that. Really, what it's really saying is just a would be the, the button there. Um, and if I take the num lock off and press a again now, you can see now it's just a. So uh, don't worry about mod two if you see it or mod one. Actually, let, let's let's put them all on. Caps lock, num lock, scroll lock. Okay, and now I'm going to press the letter A again. Oh, and it still just shows up as mod two plus A. But uh, anyway, I'm just going to take them all off now. Dun, dun, dun. There we go. All right. So now let's see some other combinations. So for example, maybe Control Shift and S. There you go. That's that's what it would look like here. Control Shift S. So you can see how this would work. Essentially, it's telling us that we can just take this this whole set here and paste that into this file. And I I'm going to paste things over here, uh, and then just change the the part after we paste it in. Change the no command to the actual command you want to run. I'm not really sure what this part is. So, and I don't see it up here in the configuration file, so I'm going to ignore that part when I do this. Okay, so now if what I want to do is create two entries 
for the keyboard shortcuts that I did have back when we were using the open box window manager. And they are listed here in this rc.xml file. Um, basically I was using shift print for this command and I was using alt print for this command. So let's see what we would have to type uh, to get that back. Okay, so I'm gonna come back to here. Actually, no, I need to have this window open. And now I'm going to do the first one, which was shift print screen. So I press that. And there you can see at the bottom, shift print. That's the thing we need. Uh, it created another one. It shows this new one as I released the shift key, but we can ignore that. So this is gonna be our first command. So I'll have that selected. I go to edit, copy, and now I'll come over to here. Give myself some space here, paste that in with uh, control V. And we'll just leave that for now. The other thing I needed was alt print. So let's go back to this white window, hold down alt, press print. And okay, there it is. And it's just alt print. Okay, great. So once again, select that, edit, copy, come to here, control V to paste. And like I said, I, I don't see in this sample entry, I just see the command and then something that's written nicely over here. I don't know what these are. I'm just going to get rid of them. Okay, just delete those. And now I need to fill in this part here. Obviously it's not no command. So let's go back to my XML file and I'll start with the shift print. I'm just gonna select all the way till the end. This is the command I want, so I'll copy that. Go into here and I will delete that and paste. So this will be my first command. And then with my second one, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and just delete that right now and then go back to the RC file and select this, copy, go back into here, paste, and that's it. I will now hit the save button. And our configuration file is now ready to go. Now, the only thing we need to do at this point, oh, we need to get rid of this. So we can open this up and press Q to quit. You should be able to press Control C from the terminal to stop that as well. And now we'll just clear the window. And the last thing we need to do before we can see everything in action is to get the XBind keys tool to read in its configuration file again so we can see these new additions that we have here. And to do that, you type XBind keys dash dash pull dash RC, press enter, and it's done. So now at this point, I should be able to hold down on the alt key and press the print screen and it should take a print screen of just my terminal, which is the active window. Let's check that. I'll open up my file manager. I will come down to here, which is the latest screenshot and view that. Mm -hmm. So there it is. It also captured this uh, part of, from my webcam, which is always on top. That should be fine. Okay, and what about my other entry. My other entry was uh, shift, shift print, and then I can drag a box to select the area to take a screenshot. So let's give that a go. Hold down on shift, print, press print screen. Okay, you can see my cursor has changed now. File manager and take a look at this file with my image viewer. And there it is. Uh, so that's it. That's how you can use XBind keys within the new Bullseye Raspberry Pi operating system, still using Mutter to have custom keyboard shortcuts to do whatever you want. I uh, hope you liked that. If you did, please do give this a like and subscribe so you can see more content when it comes. Thanks and bye now.